There was a kingdom, and the castle of that kingdom, on the high rock, above the sea, and above the wild lands, to the west. And it had become a sad kingdom. The king wandered the halls in grief, and sorrows stalked the corridors and the feasting halls that had once rang with laughter. The king's only consolation was his daughter. Princess Margaret. But now, even she couldn't keep the flame in his heart alight. Margaret awoke one morning, one bright morning to the light in the east to find that her father, the king, had vanished from the kingdom into the wild lands to the west. And she watched from the balcony the whole of that day, waiting for his return. The sun set, and still she waited, shivering in the cold that whole night long. And the sun rose in the morning, and still she waited. And many, many days and weeks passed, while the kingdom sank further into despair. Margaret, watching from the balconies with every dawn and every dusk. The seabirds arrived on the flats, but her father did not come back. Months passed in this way by the lonely waves, looking up to the whiteness of the sky and the vastness of the sea, but no sign and no comfort there. One day, word reached the castle that the king had been seen moving through the kingdom. There was a new queen at his side, and word spread fast all around. There was excitement and joy at what the kingdom would look like now. Who had the king found to be his queen? As the two figures, the king and the queen, made their way towards the castle, Margaret, watching, glad in her heart to see her father again, noticed a change in his gait. She noticed his head was turned always to the new queen. The king who was always so vigilant, whose sword could always parry a thrust and always find its way to the heart of an enemy. Now his head was turned always and his sword hand hung limp at his side. When they entered the castle gate, Margaret went down to greet them and kneeled before the new queen whose golden hair 
rosy red lips and skin as pale as snow struck her as hauntingly beautiful. She handed the keys of the castle to the new queen, saying, here you go, mother, my mother, my stepmother. All that is here is yours. With the passing of those keys, there was a shiver in the earth. And it seemed that a shadow crossed for a moment across the sun. But very quickly it had passed. The shadow passed so soon that many of those who had drunk on mead didn't even notice it. One of the drunken thanes, seeing the noble way the princess had honoured, a new stepmother, exclaimed, leaning on a friend, This princess of the north is the most beautiful woman on earth. She surpasses all the female kind in beauty and in worth. And, and had you been there, you might have noticed a shadow like the crescent moon, half in darkness, half in light, cross over the stepmother's face. He could have favoured me. Now some say that the stepmother made a curse in that hall. In a few hours, I will this princess bring down to a low degree. I will liken her to a ladly loathsome worm that warps around the stone. And some say that she muttered it to herself and silently to the book of her heart. And some say that she shouted it to the rafters. I don't know. But what I do know is that after the sun had gone down, sometime that night, and before the sun rose in the morning, Princess Margaret had been turned, had become a loathsome, poisonous worm. In her transformed state, she sought out a cave at Spindleston, and there, curled up and folded her giant body in the darkness. The kingdom now was in profound disarray, and word went hither and thither, down the roads, over the hills, across the rivers on the tongues and ears of boatmen, across the sea with merchants. What had befallen Bambra, and what had befallen that kingdom, that sad, sorrowful kingdom, where the laidly worm despoiled the fruits of the earth, and the king, a wraith, a shadow of his former self, stooped like a struck dog around the once splendid feasting halls of Bambra. Across the sea, word finally reached the ear of Child Wind. Child Wind of the glistening sword, Child Wind of the Edings, Child Wind the heir of Eda's tower. Child Wind, the brother of Lady Margaret, the princess. Child Wind, whose darting blade shone like a kingfisher. He called his men, his merry men, all thirty-three of them, and said, We must set sail to Bambra. There is something wrong in the kingdom I come from. I fear something ails my sister. We must build a ship right away, with masts of the rowan tree. And we must sail now, we have no time to waste, and return to Bambra and put things right. They set off over the sea, back to Bambra in good weather. And after days sailing, they saw on the horizon the strong tower on the high cliffs, Eda's strong tower, and they could see the grey earth spreading around the castle, and Child said, Onwards! Onwards! Something ails my sister! And as they approached the castle by sea, the stepmother stood in her tower. She'd seen the sails glancing in the sun, 
and she sent away her wild witch wives to sink that ship. The witch wives circled the ship, spitting incantations, spitting curses, with their sharp little swords trying to tear holes in the sails. But when they came close to that mast of Rowan, they were repelled as oil on water. And as they swirled and swirled and swirled, the men gathered under that mast all together, back to back, round that mast of Rowan. And none of them came to any harm. And after some time, they flew back, back over the sea, into the little tower window where the stepmother waited and watched. And then she conjured two earth warriors to board that ship and kill the child wine. child guided the boat into the shallow channels by beautiful sands, where the worm lay coiled around a stone. And as they tried to bring that ship to land, the dragon with its giant scaly tail would thump into the hull, knocking the ship back out to sea, threatening to tear the very timbers of the boat from the hull. child managed to bring that ship to land and jump down into the shallow sea over the sands to where the worm lay coiled on the stone and he's laid his sword on the worm's head and she's fallen as still as the valleys of snow in midwinter and he said to her if you do harm to me, I will strike you dead. And she said, I will do you no harm. Quit your sword. Bend your head to me. Give me kisses. Three. If I'm not one before the sun goes down, then one I shall never be. child looks and sees the sun is hanging low, evening light glinting on the sands. And he bends his head to the giant head of the worm and he gives her kisses. Three. And there's a shivering. There's a shaking. Is it the tide coming in? Or maybe the tide going out? And the worm's gone shuddering, crawling, and 
curled up in a hole on the ground. Out from the darkness of this hole in the ground, in the twilight, emerges a naked woman. Princess Margaret. Brother and sister. And he's taken his mantle from about his shoulders and he's wrapped his sister in it. His sister in the woolen cloth. And they know what they must do. They know what they must do. And then they're headed over the sands together, hand in hand. And they're headed up the castle steps together. And the king sees them there. They see the king, their father. And he, for the first time in years, is a happy man. He has the happiness of a man who thinks he's lost everything. But he wakes from a nightmare to find it was only a dream. And that what he loves most of all is right before him and can be hugged and kissed. And the king rejoiced greatly to see them both restored to him. Then they sought her out. Up the tower. They were seeking the queen. And they found her in her room at the top of the tower, shrunken and pale, almost a shadow. And she knew she must yield. She knew her power had been broken. And Child Wine said to her, Woe be to thee, thou wicked one. Out you go, out of this castle, out of this kingdom. And as she left, the spell of her enchantment fell away, and she became a hobbling thing, first of all, shapeless and squalid, getting closer and closer to the ground smaller and smaller until crawling away was only left a little toe and some say that if you're walking around Spindleston to this day you might still see this little toad crawling around spitting venom on the young women poisoned with jealousy for years and years bent on vengeance against child wine back in the castle there was much rejoicing that night and there were more barrels of mead opened than had ever been opened in one night in the castle before. The kingdom was ready once again for life. Till child, your wine comes back, she'll 
she again be won. Princess stood in the power door, laughing who could her blame. But ere the next day sun went down, a long worm she became. Seven miles east and seven miles west, seven miles north and south. A blade of grass so corn could grow, so venomous was her mouth. And over the sea did go The child of wine gone bitter lit Which filled his heart with woe He's called straight his merry men All a thirty were and three I wish I were at Spindleston This desperate one to see We have no time now here to waste Hence quickly let us sail My only sister Margaret Something I fear doth ail Without delay with the mass of the rowan tree But her in sails as a silk so fine They set her on the sea Stood in the bow window to see what she could see There she tried a gallant ship sailing on the sea the silken sails were glancing in the sun. Sink that ship, she sent away her witch wives, every one. Girls were bathed, hags returned to the queen in sorrowful mood. Why in the witches have no power, there is wrong tree wood. Worm leapt up, the worm leapt down, lapped it around the stake. I, as the ship came to the land, she banged it up again. Beautiful sand, jumping into the shallow sea, securely got to land. Then he's drawn his very brown sword and laid it on her head. Swore she did harm to him that he would strike her dead. Put thy sword and bend thy bow and give me kisses three. I'm not one of the sun goes down, one and never be. Sweet it is so. And bent his bow and gave a kiss to She's crept into a holy world and I. About and it tears wrapped her in. They are off to Bamburgh Castle, fast as they can win. Spits on every maid. 